जय हिंद एवरी वन माई नेम इज गुंजन सक्सेना असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियरिंग अजय कुमार गर्ग वेलकम टू दी डा सीरीज इन टूडेज लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस डायनामिक प्रोग्रामिंग एंड द टॉपिक इज मैपसेक जीरो वन प्रॉब्लम सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर द आउटलाइंस आर फर्स्टली आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वॉट अबाउट दी डायनामिक प्रोग्रामिंग आफ्टर देन आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एप्लीकेशन एरिया ऑफ डायनामिक प्रोग्रामिंग then the very interesting problem the name is knapsack problem and after that i am going to solve a example of this particular problem so let's start so basically what is the dynamic programming dynamic programming is a technique in which technique we are going to subdivide a huge problem and then the sub subdivided portions or we can say the part of the problem we are going to solve and the solution of these particular sub problems are going to be solved uh, stored in the table and these particular sub problem solutions are further used in future papers so what what is the definition said a dynamic programming is a general algorithm design technique for solving the problem which is defined by the richard wellman to solve the optimization problem this is the recurrence relation problem with the overlapping sub problems here the meaning of dynamic word is which is changeable or which we can change and the means of programming here this is not a computer programming basically this is the planning so the meaning of dynamic programming is the changeable moment according to the planning so what is the main idea behind this dynamic programming here a set up a recurrence relating a solution of a larger instance to solve the larger problem in the smaller instances solve the smaller instances one after then record the solution in the particular table and extract this solution to the initiate the instance from the table in the future when we are required so in last video i also discuss about the divide and conquer in in this method we also do the subdivision of the larger problem and solve the sub problems as a whole and after that we are going to conquer these particular problems but what is the difference between dynamic programming and the divide and conquer approaches basically in divide and conquer we are going to solve these problem in insufficient manner because the same common sub problem have to be solved many times so it is not so much efficient but in case of dynamic programming what we are doing actually we are just doing the sub part of the huge amount of problem in the sub problem and we solve these particular sub parts and save these answers in the table and what we are doing if similar type of problem are coming in future then we are not going to solve again and again we are just taking from the result from the table and that is why we are saying the dynamic programming is more efficient as compared to divide and conquer technique so what are the different elements which are going to be used in dynamic programming there are several elements or we can say the several characteristics are there number one simple sub problem basically we should be able to break the original problem in the smaller sub problem that we have a same structure so we can say the sub parts of the huge amount of problem is always follow the same structure and then uh, the optimal sub structure of the problem the optimal solution of the problem contained within the optimal solution of its sub problem the last one is overlapping sub problem there are existing some places where we solve the same sub problem more than once so what are the application areas some application areas are there like knapsack problem which we are going to be discuss in this video next one is all wear shortest path this is the problem by which we are doing the uh, we are calculating the shortest path from every source of vertex to the every vertices the name of the algorithm is flood washer algorithm and third one is resource allocation problem fourth one is matrix chain multiplication many more are there like longest sequence uh, sub sequences problem uh, etc so in this lecture we are going to discuss the knapsack problem 
what is the knapsack as the name suggests knapsack is just like a container or a bag this bag having their own capacity in this particular bag if any thief suppose a scenario a thief wants to store some uh, objects from from any store from any house and he is having their own knapsack with the own capacity then what is the criteria what is the way he can uh, uh, put the different object with uh, with the different different values then we get the maximum profit so there are two versions of this particular problem what are that this one is zero one knapsack problem and second one is a fractional knapsack problem so it is the invisible you can either take a item completely or not which is called as dynamic programming but a uh, item is divisible if the space is less then you can get the frictional part of the particular item which is called as greedy algorithm so this is the picturization there is a knapsack and these are the different objects suppose this bag having a capacity of 20 kg and there are different different modules so how i can decide which particular Uh, object i am going to be pick to get the maximum profit so uh, this is the so called definition that the goal is maximize the value of the knapsack that can hold the most of w units worth of the good goods from the list item 0 to nth item so uh, in knapsack problem basically in zero one knapsack problem there is a set s of n elements with each elements having a particular weight of the value and the benefit of the value what is the goal goal is to choose the item with the maximum total benefit but the weight of most w uh, which is the knapsack weight so here why we can say the greedy approach is fail why we are not applying the greedy approach on zero one knapsack basically in zero one knapsack what is the main a concept behind this either we are taking the complete element and we uh, drop it so zero is we are drop it the element one is what we are picking that particular element and what the greedy said greedy said we are just calculating the profit by weight ratio and we are calculating the table in uh, decreasing order after that the profit by weight ratio who's uh, going to be maximum we are taking that particular object first so why greedy is fail for zero one knapsack let us take a example so greedy approach provide the optimal solution to the fractional knapsack if we are going to do the fractional laps knapsack then greedy is best but in case of zero one greedy approach is actually fail because it does not ensure an optimal solution to the zero one knapsack how let us take an example there are three objects the profit values are there and the weight values are there after then we are calculating the profit by weight ratio of these particular object so the object 1 having a profit upon weight value 6 5 and 4 so we are just maintaining the decreasing order of these particular data suppose the value of uh, knapsack is 50 so obviously the profit upon weight value is 6 so i am taking the object 1 and the weight of object 1 is 10 now 50 minus 10 the rest weight is 40 of the knapsack okay now object 2 having the profit upon weight value is 5 and the weight is 20 then i am taking the object 2 in knapsack now 40 minus 20 the rest weight of knapsack is 20 and the third object is weight 30 so i am not able to collect this particular object 3 in the knapsack so what is the profit if we are doing uh, this particular example or we uh, we are solving using the greedy method the profit is 60 plus 100 which is 160 but what are you thinking is it the optimal solution no actually not so by this i can say the greedy approach is failed for the zero one knapsack actually what is the optimal solution if we are picking up the object 2 and 3 then we got the maximum profit how the profit value is 100 
for object 2 and the profit value is 120 for object 3 which is equal to what, 220. So by this example I can say the greedy approach is failed for knapsack 01. So what is the knapsack 01? Let us take this example. Uh, there are three objects as we know the uh, what we can say for the three objects there are these particular tries. Uh, what, what are that? If we are going to uh, take no one object or we can say I take only object number three, object number two, object number two or three. These are the particular combination. So this particular object one and object three, if we are taking from this table, then we got the optimal solution. So this is the phenomena for three object. Suppose we have n object like one, two, three up to n. For all the n object, I have a option. We are going to take object number one. Maybe we are not taking, maybe I am taking. So every element have two, two choice. Nth element, two choice. So we can say the complexity of this particular problem is 2 to the power n. So this is the exponential power. So this is the analysis of this particular 0 1 knapsack. Now we are going to solve a particular example then we get a more clarity. Okay. So I am taking an example. In this particular example there are four objects. The profit values are there and the weight values are there. What is the actual phenomena or we can say what is the actual working of this particular knapsack? The knapsack 01 says in the dynamic programming there are formula based. <coughs> These are the three formulas. Suppose this is KS, this is called as knapsack function. Here the number of objects, here number of objects are 4, comma W which is the knapsack capacity. So, n comma w is equals to when it will becomes a zero when if there is no object, suppose we don't have any object, then obviously the knapsack value, the profit value is obviously zero because I'm not going to pick any object because there is no object. So, or w equals to zero. Suppose the knapsack having a zero capacity. If we are having a knapsack, uh, if there is a no capacity to put the particular object, then the profit of this particular point is becomes zero. Okay. What is the second situation? The second situation is suppose a particular uh, object we are getting to put the weight of this particular object is larger than the capacity of the knapsack. Then we are not going to put that particular element and just we are going to a next element. So, in uh, when we are going to the next element, the number of object is obviously minus and I am not putting that particular element in the knapsack. So, the, bay, uh, the weight is remains same, W. What is the third uh, category? Otherwise, if the weight, obviously uh, the weight is minimum or the equal, then we are going to take these particular step, these are the recurrence function. In this recurrence function, we are just taking the maximum value. And which maximum value? If we are going to uh, take this particular element or we are dropping this particular element. If I am going to take this particular element, what is the, what is the result? The n minus 1, obviously the one object is uh, deleted because we are taking this particular element and the weight. What is the weight? Weight actually the actual knapsack weight is divided um, from the, the element we are taking. Okay, right. When we are selecting this particular element, then obviously the profit value of that particular element is going to be added in the profit list. Okay. And the next thing is if we are not considering that particular element. Obviously, the weight becomes W and what, uh, what are the number of element actually is uh, which is the n minus 1 and whose is maximum? The maximum value we can take as a profit value of that particular element. Now, we are going to solve this particular problem. Basically, this question is very important for the uh, university exams uh, in AKTU as well. So, what is the question? 
how we are going to solve uh, we are just making a table as we say the sub problems is divided into prob uh, in the table and the table entry is used for the further use if, if required right so we are just making a table of uh, here n equals to 0 1 up to 4 and this particular columns are here simply we are just showing the same weight and profit for the for further reference and these are the actual area which are the w equals to 0 up to the uh, w equals to 7 what is 7 7 is a weight we are just checking for every element in the particular uh, knapsack capacity we are putting or not we are we are not putting so just see this particular column and row the column where n equals to 0 the row basically this is the row where the value of n is 0 and this particular column where the value of w equals to 0 just go through the first step which said if n equals to 0 and the w equals to 0 we are just putting what we are just putting 0 over the here okay now just see this particular one what how how this one is come actually now this place is what here n equals to 1 and the w equals to 1 then we can simply say we are going to call k 1 comma 1 where n equals to 1 and w equals to 1 so what is the result and what is the matching over there in this particular recurrence so the value of n and w is not equal to 0 then first is not called what about the second one is the second one is called let us check so here we can say the weight of n what is n n is 1 and weight is 1 is what the weight of n is 1 and the weight of and the weight of this what is this weight which is 1 so 1 is greater than 1 no actually not 1 is greater than 1 so this particular area is also not called then we go to the otherwise section and what is that said so here we can say case n minus 1 that is 1 minus 1 which is 0 and w minus w t n w is what w is 1 and weight of n equals to 1 is again 1 then 1 minus 1 is what 0 plus profit whose profit the nth profit profit then n equals to 1 and what is the profit profit is 1 then k 0 comma 0 plus 1 if we are taking this or we are ignoring this and what is the case of ignoring we are just simply n minus 1 and weight is remain same then 0 comma 1 so here 0 comma 0 is 0 plus 1 which is 1 and 0 comma 1 is again 0 then what is the maximum so maximum value is 1 so here i am just putting the value of 1 now how we are going to calculate k n value is 1 and k value is 2 how we are going to calculate actually uh, this is the simple logic if we are saying if we are seeing there are only object there are only object and the weight is 1 and the capacity of knapsack is also 1 then we easily picked this particular object to the knapsack suppose we are having a object we are having a object the weight is one and the only object is there and the knapsack if knapsack having a capacity of 2 kg 3 kg 4 kg 5 kg 6 kg 600 kg how much the capacity is there but there is only object then i am only able to collect this particular object now so in this particular row all the values are one I hope uh, you can understand why I am putting these particular value 1 without calculating. If you are going to calculate by using same phenomena, you get the value 1. Right? So, next, when there are n equals to 2, what does that mean? Now, I am just checking of knapsack different different values and if there are two elements what is the criteria i am taking both of the element or i am taking second element or i am taking one element what is the mean of n equals to 2 there are two objects are there object 2 and object 1 okay the first one weight is 3 and second one weight is 1 
So in next particular step, we are just going to discuss, I am taking both of the object or any of the object. So first we are trying to tap on n equals to 2. If no solution at n equals to 2, we already have n equals to 1 table. What I have discussed. So these particular table without the calculation just directly use it. This is the main uh, phenomena behind this knapsack. Now in next we are just see how we are going to calculate when n equals to 2. Let us see. <coughs> Sorry. Now k s 2 comma 1. What does that mean? There are two object and the capacity is 1. So what is that place? This is the place. Now I am just calculating. So just imagine you are having a object, object number 2, which is the having weight 3 and the capacity is 1. Then how we are can getting uh, more profit? No, na. Because we are having, just, just see, uh, the weight of that particular element, which is what? 3. And the weight of this particular W is what? 1. So, just see, this case is arises, the weight of particular element is 3 which is greater than 1. So, this case is arises, we are just what, what we are doing, we are just neglecting this particular point. So, n minus 1, what is n minus 1? Just see, the value of n is 2, n minus 1 is 1 and the weight of w is 1, then 1 comma 1. So, what is the 1 comma 1? We are not going to calculate 1 comma 1 again. Why? Because we already use this particular 1 comma 1. We are just taking and use it. Right? Then or we can say just see the value of n equals to 2 and the weight is 3. Here weight is 3, weight is 1. No chances. So as it is value, old value. Here weight is 3 and here weight is 2. No chances we can pick this particular element. So just put it the old value. Now this is the interesting thing. Here, the weight of 3 and weight of W, which is equal. Now, otherwise state. Let us see. This is very interesting. Now, here KS1. How the 1 is N minus 1? So, 2 minus 1, which is 1. Now, how become 0? Just check. W minus WTN. So, what is W? W is 3. WTN, what is? 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So, knapsack 1 comma 0. Plus, what is the profit? The profit of this particular element is 4. So, k1, 0 plus 4 or k1, 3. If I am not taking, then <coughs> n minus 1 and the w weight is the same weight, which is 3. So, which is maximum? The maximum value is this one. So, k2, 3, 2, 3 becomes 4. Right? Next, which is more interesting, see here k2, 4. What is 2, 4? The weight is 3 and the weight is 4, actually, right? Then see ks equals to 1, 4 plus 4. The value is k1, 1 is 1 and 4 is 5. The value is 5. Again, here the weight is 3. See, here we are taking element number 2 and element number 4. What is the capacity of element number 2? Which is 3. What is the capacity of element number 1? Which is 1. So, 3 plus 1, the maximum object having the 4 capacity. Then, we are having an object, the capacity 4. Now, if you maximize the capacity of uh, knapsack uh, up to 1000 or more than, so much capacity are there, but if we are having an object only a capacity 4, then the every value is same as. So, we just put in without calculating the value 5. Right? So, I believe by using these particular criteria, you are able to complete this particular table. If you have any problem just calculating these particular problem, you are just text me, I will solve it. Right? So, what is the next? What is next we have to do after completing this particular table? We are just calculating this, this particular, this particular space having the final result actually. 
so uh, i already said this is the top to bottom to top approach so we are just solving the huge amount of problem in sub problem and after then reaching the particular solution the overall solution now just how to check uh, which element is going to be take so this is the nine just checking out this particular nine is already available in the above row or not so just check yes nine is available that means this nine is not come by using the element number four we are just simply write down zero at down the four zero zero means is what we are not picking up the element number four so we can say this particular n equals to four is not taken right now see if as the above row the nine is available no nine is not available that means this maximize nine is becomes the element number three so what we are saying we are just picking up this particular element which is the n equals to three or we can say object number three so i put it down one right so Nine minus five. What is five? Actually, the third element. What is the profit of third element? Which is five. Now the total profit is nine. Nine minus five. We rest only a four profit. Next, just see in the above line where is the four. So is there is any four? Yes, four is there. Okay. Again, check this four in the above row. A four is there. just check the above row no four is not there so what we are saying what we are thinking this particular four comes the particular this four profit comes with the element of n equals to 2 so just we are picking up 3 as well as 2 so 2 is also select okay then i am just putting the one now four profit is rest then 4 minus 4 which becomes 0 just check it out the zero is there no no zero is not there so n equals to 1 not taking right then above above yes zero is there and this is the zeroth row when we are just reaching with the same value same value obviously the value is zero at the zeroth row the process is going to be stop so just check it out the one is zero i am not taking one two i am not take i am just going to take the second element third i am just going to take the third element as well and fourth is not taken so the solution of this particular problem we are just picking up the element number 2 and element number 3 to get the maximum profit so what is the maximum profit the maximum profit is 5 plus 4 which is 9 which is already shown there so this is the main phenomena main uh criteria how we are going to solve this particular knapsack so i am just sum up the today's lecture in today's lecture just we are uh, picking up the technique which is the divide and conquer uh, which is the dynamic programming technique and just give the a simple difference between a divide and conquer approach in divide and uh, in divide and conquer approach we are just dividing the huge amount of problem and we just solve the sub parts again and again but in the dynamic programming again we are sub dividing the huge amount of problem and the sub problems is divided and uh, again these division these non over overlapping parts are solved separately and then after the separation we are just going to solve these particular sub modules and just save these particular sub modules in the table why these particular sub modules are used further used future without calculating again and again which make the dynamic programming more efficient than uh, divide and conquer approach and after that one of the application name knapsack we are just discuss what about what is the knapsack the two various way to solve the knapsack approach the greedy approach and the zero one approach in the greedy approach obviously we are just picking the fractional part and in the zero one we are just taking complete the object or just avoid the object so i believe by using this particular lecture you are just uh, you get the knowledge about these particular 
टॉपिक्स सो फॉर टूडेज ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच